Homes has served our community's roofing needs since 1986. Our local team is proud to stand behind each roof we install and relationships we are building with our community. Highland Homes, where quality is our legacy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Revo Racing Network for Thursday night action of the TTR Short Track Series brought to you by Highland Homes Roofing. Tonight, we're at the Irwindale Speedway for the second race of the round of two for their playoff races, where two drivers will get eliminated tonight. We will see the, the group that moves on to round three. My name is Trevor Earhart. With me tonight, Justice Murphy up in the booth with Rob Rader running the productions. And Justice, the last round, the cutoff race for these drivers before they move into the, the third round of the playoffs. And uh, we saw a new winner last week for the first time since we've joined the TTR Short Track Series with Ryan Truex getting the win. What do you think in the the odds are we see a different winner again here tonight? I uh, there's gonna be a couple of those guys praying they get that win, Trevor, needing uh, needing the win to get through, or uh, just needing to win really to secure it, not feel like they're chasing points all night. So, uh, yeah, a couple guys that would love to do that are guys like you know Patrick Grapaldi in the double zero car, Nicholas Tomlinson in the thirty three car. Those guys are right on the cutoff line, plus two, minus two. Dallas Montez plus six. So those guys are really going to be the ones pushing hard, trying to get up front and uh, get a win. That way they secure their way through to the next round, Trevor. It's going to be fun to watch. Kyle Sisko, also one of the drivers in the must-win situations, but unfortunately not here with us tonight. So that's going to leave basically three drivers fighting for uh, two, fighting for essentially that one spot where Nicholas Tomlinson is on that cutoff line to get in. But we'll take a quick look at our starting grid with Jared Duda getting the pole here tonight with Tyler Truex going to start in second. Patrick Capaldi, one of those drivers needing a good finish here tonight, is going to roll off in third with James Stinger starting in fourth. Nicholas Tomlinson, the man on the bubble, is going to roll off in fifth with Tony Mangi in sixth. Greg uh, Vile will roll off in seventh with Jonathan Leach in eighth. Paul Mancini will start in ninth, and Matt Garrett will roll off in tenth. Yeah, followed by Kenneth Smith in eleventh, Austin Pavia in twelfth. Uh, Jeff Sickles will roll off 13th, Kyle Tarasca 14th, Robbie Walton 15th, Brian A 16th, and Dallas Montez will start 17th shotgun on the field, Trevor. Uh, we've seen him have speed everywhere we've gone. Is this going to be another case where he goes back to front? We're going to have to wait and see for Montez. going to need, uh, need a good run here coming in plus six. There are two stages tonight, lap 30. In lap 70 and points pay out 3 2 1 1 1. So, I mean, justice if the guys like Tomlinson or Capaldi, who's starting up front, can get these good stage points, this could push that uh, two machine of Montez out, out of that, that bubble. Actually, I'm sorry, stage one is gonna be 35, not 30. My bad there, but uh, that, that could really hurt that two machine if those guys up in front of him get those stage points. Yeah, it's gonna put him in a really tough spot with uh, guys that. Or below him in the points, you know, can go up there and get a few stage points. And all of a sudden, he's the one chasing points. So, uh, going to need something special here. Pace car pulls off, Trevor, and they come through four. These boys getting ready to roll these things and uh, show us uh, something fun tonight. Oh, it's going to be based off of what we saw in practice. This should be a good race. Green flag is out. There goes Jared Duda, Tyler Truex on the throttle as they head into one and two. And well, we see drivers get loose. We saw a car slip and slide in practice and a little bit of slip and slide into turn one. Contact already made as Grapaldi gets loose after contact, but everybody hangs on to it, but they're fanning out down the back stretch. Yeah, we got cars three, four wide down here, Trevor. A lot more contact being made. Uh, what we were seeing a lot in practice. Oh, and oh, and there's the wreck. This is the double zero goes around, and we're going to get the yellow flag. Uh, we saw a lot in practice. You got to kind of go down and slide your way up if you want to make a pass. So, uh a lot of Kyle Larson's in the field tonight going to be needed to, to make moves. Yeah, based off of what we saw in practice, a lot of uh, slide job opportunities going to be available to these guys tonight, and we'll see how that's going to play out over the course of this 150-lap race. The drivers do get one fast repair, though, so for uh, the double zero of Patrick Capaldi, as we see here on the replay, Justice, I mean, they're four wide, five wide in here at Irwindale. Not going to help, and it was a little bit of contact from some cars below him that sends the double zero around and hard contact with that inside wall. Yeah, it just ran out of room there, Trevor, it looked like. And uh, yeah, trying to fit four or five cars where only two or three need to be uh, can make it pretty tough. But 
Yeah, he'll be able to go down. I, I imagine this early, he's probably just going to see if he can get it repaired uh, by the boys on pit road as opposed to using the uh, new car rollout. So, uh, yeah, he, uh, he'd probably be able to take a little bit of damage repair and try to work his way back forward. He did need those points, though, so it's going to gonna be a little brutal having to go to the back try to come back forward. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out for him. Uh, a little bit of a, an interesting note, though. Tyler Truex did get the lead on that quick little two-lap run, but Dallas Montez, Justice, did not start this race. Uh, currently not out on track, so that plus-six bubble that he had in that two machine uh, really in jeopardy here tonight from Tomlinson and Grapaldi. Yeah, and especially Tomlinson moved up, I believe, up to sixth here, maybe fifth. So uh, he's now in a good position to maybe get some stage points if it can go green, get a little run here. Uh, he's going to set himself up very nicely. So we'll see how it plays out. I was, again, third, lap 35 going to be the first stage, working lap number five here uh, at the TTR Short Track Series, brought to you by Highland Homes Roofing. Uh, go check out Highland Homes Roofing at their YouTube channel. Like, comment, subscribe, as they've been kind enough to jump on with the TTR Short Track Series to sponsor them for the rest of their season. Uh, and Justice, next week we get to the the third round of the playoffs. We get the bull ring and five flags as the next two tracks. It's going to set us up for the championship uh, championship race at New Hampshire, uh, where we'll have five drivers racing for the championship there. But uh, the bull ring and five flags, again, two really small racetracks for these guys to go racing around. Yeah, Five Flags being the bigger, the two there. Five Flags, fantastic. I uh, don't know a ton about the bull ring, but uh, Five Flags always produces great racing regardless of the vehicles that are there. So I'd expect nothing less out of this group as we're getting ready to take the green flag here, Trevor. Here we go. Tyler Truex going to lead us back to the lead with Jared Duda, Jonathan Le Leach, and Tony Mangi going to be the top four. Green flag is out, and Tyler with a great launch in that 69 machine is going to clear the 53 before we ever get into turn number one, and now he's going to hold off. The field behind him is Monty trying to use that bottom. And Justice, that bottom line is going to be what I'm curious about is we see a little bit of beating and banging down the back straightaway. But will we see that bottom line work or is it going to be the top line and the middle line that's going to work as battle for the lead as Duda goes to the front, one car spinning in the back and contact made and the caution's back out again here on lap number eight. Yeah, it looks like some guys running out of patience early, Trevor, trying to get forward. Uh, we'll get a replay of that, see what, what's going on there. But yeah, that battle up front. So we're going to go to the replay, actually. Uh, here, yeah, just up in the wall here, gets loose, turns down, seven's in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, that's a brutal part of racing at any any level. Uh, you just, guy up there is wrecking, you're not even a part of it. Next thing you know, you're uh, turned around backwards in the wall. Has lost in Pavia, and the 83 machine gets loose and comes down, clicks, clips the seven of Paul Mancini, and nowhere for the 33 uh, of Nicholas Tomlinson, Justice to go as long as as well with the 18 of James Stanger and for for Tomlinson needing those stage points, I still staying out there. So I think he only ends up losing one position in that 33 machine. But I'm sorry, it wasn't Tomlinson involved in that record. It was a 66 of Robbie Walton that was involved in that. So Tomlinson good still loses one spot. So out of the stage uh, payout, but plenty of time. But Tomlinson, one of those driver uh, Walton, I'm sorry, one of those drivers in the wrong place, wrong time there for that caution. Yeah, for Tomlinson's sake, he restarted fifth on that restart and it just couldn't get up to the top line. That's going to probably be pretty much uh, normal for anybody uh, beyond the first row. Uh, you're going to have trouble coming from that bottom line, uh, getting up the top lane, just going to kind of take you over because we saw that on the last restart where uh, Tyler was able to just get a huge run. I think Jared ended up passing him there right as the wreck was happening. We were watching the wreck and trying to commentate that but these guys uh they're gonna settle down at some point i would fully expect that uh even as desperate as they might be in the back of the field to try to get some points yeah i mean this has kind of been the trend that we've seen uh, throughout covering these guys is a, a rash of cautions early but then it kind of gets to that point where we get the green flag runs we get the the, the leaning on each other pretty hard we saw it last week at richmond granted richmond being the, one of the biggest tracks that those guys go to plenty of more room to do that but here at irwindale uh, guys trying to figure out what the car can and can't do. And I got to say, it looks like it's a handful out there. If you're running the top, uh, if you're running the bottom, it's kind of everywhere. The car looks like it likes to slide around just a little bit. Well, any track you go to has a little more banking like Richmond. Um, you're going to be able to beat and bang a little more and keep control of the car. Uh, any flat track you go to, such as the championship track like New Hampshire, you have a little more trouble. But these guys typically get it figured out. I'm not too concerned. 
As we're getting ready to take the green again, we'll do to get the big launch, Trevor. Wait and see here. Jerry Duda going to lead us out of turn number four to the restart here on lap number 12. On the loud pedal he goes. And not a great, not as good of a restart as Tyler Truex got the last time. Truex going to drop it all the way down to the, essentially the grass, trying to go for an aggressive slide job on the 53. Not going to be able to do so. And now he's going to give up the position to maybe the 92 of Tony Manji. So Manji's going to drive it in there. And that battle for second heats up here through three and four. Yeah, it's the hardest part when you go to make that slide job as we see contact with the 92. He save it. He tries Tries to fish it around and ends up spun around through the grass. It stays green because he's off the track, but this should get a yellow here. Oh, and Tyler Truex spun late as well. Uh, just seems to be a lot of contact after the fact there that probably wasn't necessary, if we're being honest. Carnage, turn number two, and it all starts with contact from the 69. Of Tyler Truex into the back of the 92 of Tony Manji. Sends him around, and then I think it was a little bit more contact with the 33 of a Nicholas Tomlinson in the 66 machine again uh, gets caught up in this justice of Robbie Walton as we'll get to take a look back here on the replay and, and see what all unfolded here in turn number one and two. Yeah, it's uh, it was kind of interesting. I think Tyler just kind of misjudged this coming off the corner, catches the rear of the 92 and he just can't get it saved. As he slides through the grass, it's probably gonna stay green. As he slides through the grass when he comes back up on the track, you got guys reacting. Tyler just trying to avoid contact ends up on the uh, left front of the 33. So, yeah, 33 unfortunately involved, 66 unfortunately involved again. Uh, but I'd expect this to, to clean up very quickly. Uh, Tyler may be taking a fast repair here. We saw a couple weeks ago that front end damage Trevor really killed these cars. Uh, and his car looks like somebody uh, put him in a hailstorm. That car looks like it's... Uh been written off a couple times in the insurance world there that thing looks i don't think there's a a, a straight panel a piece of sheet metal on that car there justice but uh it looks like he's been given an eol penalty kenneth camp uh actually i'm sorry that's not uh that was one of the spotters not one of the drivers but we had our first retirement of the night maybe one of the, the driver spotters calling it a night early uh but yeah down pit road for for matt garrett tony Monji, tyler truex cal tarasca uh, all down pit road this time by getting various damage repaired and maybe some, some fuel as well. They do have one set of tires uh, out here tonight. I don't think I expect anybody to take tires this early, Justice. Is that you have to go 150 laps basically with knowing you only have one set. So I think it's a little bit too early for these guys to be doing that. Yeah, I would fully expect that to come probably at the end of stage two. They're probably going to run the first two stages all the way on this set because uh, that's going to be about the halfway point when they restart. So. Uh, that's when I'd expect them to take it. And, and until then, you're just trying to conserve. And right now, they're getting plenty of opportunities to do so. Uh, we do have a new car on the front row here with Jonathan Leach. We'll see if he can take his shot at Jared Duda as it's getting ready to go green here. See if he's got any of the four machines, got anything for the 53 of Duda. Duda's won three of the last four races on the gr uh, green flag is out. Here goes Jared Duda again. The great restart, but Leach going to try that same line that we saw Tyler Truex do. Will he be able to have the momentum off the bottom? Doesn't get as loose. He's going to stay door to door as they head down the backstretch, but Duda able to get the momentum off. But here comes the seven of Paul Mancini involved in one of the earlier cautions trying for that audacious slide job. Doesn't quite get it to stick, and he's going to possibly lose the position of Nicholas Tomlinson. Yeah, big run here by Nicholas Tomlinson, and now the nine car sticking his nose up there. Uh, it just looks like once you get down there, if you can't make it stick, you're going to end up losing a couple spots. Uh, as, a, as a seven of Paul Mancini still fighting back, though. Uh, we'll see if he can hang on here as the nine keeps peeking his nose. It's bringing the 61 and the 18 into the battle. Uh, as the longer you stay side by side, you're going to keep drawing guys in, uh, and these moves are going to get way more aggressive. This is about the longest run we've had tonight. And now this is the, the fun part to see how these cars are going to react over the course of, of a run. If you get pinched down there to the bottom, uh, are you going to be stuck down there? Is he going to be trying to find a hole? And right now for Mancini, it was being stuck, but finds a hole right in front of the 18 machine of James Stanger and now can kind of ride in line. But Justice, that's going to be hard here. Looking at the line, these guys are running right up there near the wall. It's going to take a pretty good slide job down into one of these corners to get by somebody. Yeah, it's going to take two things you, you gotta have one of two a great slide job or a massive tire advantage uh, where you can just go down and kind of force them to run a little bit higher if you can get somebody up in the marbles maybe get them a little bit off kilter there but uh yeah once it once it gets single filed out it's gonna be very hard to pass but i, I have a feeling a few of these guys are gonna get that figured out these these boys never lack action 
uh, whenever we need it. No, they do not. And right now, the action is going to be between the 61 and Kenneth Smith, the 18 of James Stanger. Is Smith trying to make that inside line work for himself. Just not able to keep that momentum up on the bottom line. Stanger holding them off for now. But it kind of looks like the 7 of Mancini might be holding these two drivers up. And here goes the 61 again. Justice trying to get by him on the inside as we go on board with James Stanger. As he follows Paul Mancini into 1 and 2, trying to now take a look up the inside. Yeah, and see, he gets underneath it, makes a little contact, and ends up loose from it. So, uh, yeah, it's just kind of weird how you're going to have to do this. And I'm guessing you're going to have to move a guy out of the groove or really throw a hard slider. Uh, it looked like the eight, the seven, sorry, of Paul Mancini had maybe burned up his tires a little bit, and that's what let these guys catch him. Uh, we'll see as the 18 continues to kind of breathe down the back of his neck here. Yeah, trying to breathe down his neck and still trying to hold off the 61 machine right behind them, the 92 of Tony Manji. He's moving up through the field after being caught up in that last uh, last caution with the 69 of Tyler Truex. He's now behind the 61 of Kenneth Smith as he continues his march forward. Uh, after being sent to the back of the field, he's already gotten past the double zero of Patrick Rapaldi. And now closing in on this battle as we go up the up to the front of the field, Nicholas Tomlinson looking at the inside of Jonathan Leach. This is going to be for second place and trying to hold off the nine of Greg uh, Vile. Yeah, Leach got a little loose there, got into the wall, and Nicholas Tomlinson thought he might be able to take a run, it looked like, and uh, ended up not working out. Leach got the car collected back, was able to get back running. Now you bring the nine into the fold, right? If you're the 33, losing a spot to the nine is not that big of a deal because it's the same amount of stage points. It is a big deal, though, that the four would no longer be the car out of the windshield because that is a difference in stage points if you can go up there and pass him. Uh, and as we talked about, Nicholas Tomlinson being the guy that's directly above the cut line, uh, he definitely would like to get two as opposed to one here. Yeah, he'd like that extra point to be sure. The good news for, for Tomlinson, uh, with Cisco not showing up tonight and Grappaldi being all the way down there in ninth position, that, that two-point buffer he has looking pretty good, if he, especially if he can hold on and get at least one stage point. But right now, under pressure, back behind them, though, that second group, that's where the action's kind of been, the 92 of manji has been able to get past the 61 of Kenneth Smith, and he's been working on the 18 of, of uh, Stanger. Stanger with a big slide through three and four, and Stanger finally going to have a go at uh, Mancini, and there's the slide job justice, but overdrove it, and there goes Mancini with the crossover move. Yeah, I, I fully expected that from Stanger. He knows he needs a stage point here uh, if he wants to keep from getting close to that cutoff line right now because Tomlinson's in front of him, uh, who's going to get stage points. Vales in front of him who's going to get stage points uh so when those guys are out in front of you uh, you got to make sure you're trying to get one so uh it looks like he ended up costing himself a position ultimately uh, as the 92 was able to get by him as well so we'll see if he can work his way back forward got two stages to make it up but you, you got to figure out how to get up there and be competitive with these guys got plenty of time to make it up one car loose uh, down the front straightaway that's the 77 machine of brian hayes that had a little bit of a moment down the front straightaway as we get ready to start lap number 34, two laps to go before the end of the stage as we go back up to that battle for second, third, and fourth as uh, Thomas and Leach and Vile just go at it. And again, nobody really being able to do anything. They have lost about a second and a half to our race leader, Jared Duda, uh, here. Justice is Duda. Looks like he's going to cruise to the, the stage win here. Yeah, honestly, it looks like Jared Duda's just out there managing the gap as we are back here, the, the 92 and the 7, side by side again. Maybe the 18 can try to do something, get by them both here, coming to the uh, the last lap of the stage. He tries, gets up on that bumper. 92 is may clear the 7. This is going to be very tight. Uh, this is going to be probably the best battle on the track for the stage points is Nicholas Tomlinson not quite able to get past the 4 uh, of Jonathan Leach there. Now across the line, Duda gets the stage win, and that battle for 4th, or I'm sorry, that was the battle for fifth. Looks like Manji able to get it. No caution quite yet, but there's the caution for stage one as Jared Duda is going to get the stage one win with Jonathan Leach, Nicholas Thomas, and Greg Vile. Tony Manji uh, nips out Paul Mancini for that fifth spot. So three points to Jared Duda, two points to Jonathan Lynch, and then one point each for Thomas and Vile and Manji there, Justice. And pretty good battle there for fifth. And I think uh, Manji, if he can get clear of this traffic, might have something for our race leader with kind of the, spe the speed that he's shown. Yeah, it looks like he's uh, on a march up there. I think if he can get there and then kind of conserve this set of tires, go back and get that new one at the end of stage two, uh, he's going to have a chance to give Jared Duda a real battle. We'll have to wait and see. My, my worry there with how quickly he got through the field is how much life did he take out of that set of tires that he currently has on that car. 
uh, and how much that's going to affect that 92 machine. But we'll have to wait and see as the drivers catch the pace car, get ready for their first pit stops of the night, uh, or most of the field's first pit stops of the night. We've seen some guys come down pit road and get some damage uh, done or repaired, but here we go. I expect just uh, gas only here, Justice, but we might see some drivers make a, a big swing at this and take right side tires. Yeah, I, I would be surprised, but they may. Um, it's going to depend on what you feel like you've burned up. I think this is more just to go get some fuel and uh, see what you got from there. But we've seen some interesting strategies. Sometimes you got to throw a Hail Mary. Uh, if you're a guy like Tyler Truex, maybe he was in the back there and just looked like he was kind of riding around after he got in that wreck. I don't know if he was trying to conserve uh, or trying to you know hold off looks like he's maybe still got some damage as he did just take his fast repair on pit road so uh yeah i think you're gonna see some guys be pretty conservative at times i don't know that a whole lot of tire pit stops are a real smart idea right this minute a slow pit stop for the 53 of jared dudas he's beaten off pit road by tony Monji, greg vile there so not quite sure what the difference in the pit stops were for those two compared to our, our previous race leader but that's going to put the 53 back in some traffic uh, which is going to make this a restart really interesting is that's going to kind of shake up the running order here. Yeah, it looks like the 53 actually had, gosh, the only people that had slower pit times than him were Nicholas Tomlinson and everybody from ninth on back. So uh, those are the guys that were probably had just a little bit of damage from some altercations on track, uh, maybe trying to get those repaired without using their fast repair quite yet. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of a slow stop there. It's kind of an interesting uh, thing from Jared Duda, an uncharacteristic mistake, but uh, yeah, I think these guys are going to be battling now. Now we have that 92 car at the front, Trevor, uh, even though basically going to be on even tires with the 53. I just think that 53 was able to kind of get out there, conserve, manage a gap, uh, and I think he's going to get right back up there and get by that 92, but you never know. That outside lane seems to just be winning out regardless. We'll see what happens. Those three, Vile, Manji, and Duda, along with Ryan Truex, put on a great show last week at Richmond. For those of you who tuned in for that one, they were beating and banging on each other for pretty much the entirety of that race. But here we go. Green flag is out. Manji on the loud pedal. He's going to clear the nine machine of Vile as they head into turn number one. We'll see what Duda's able to do. And Stanger trying to get aggressive and get by the nine machine. Almost three wide through one and two. Vile in the Vile into the wall off the 18 of Stanger. But everybody keeps it straight, keeps it green, but scattering throughout the back of the pack. Well, the four car Jonathan Leach actually went around, but he's off track. So uh, he's going to be able to get back on the track going straight. It's going to keep the caution from coming out. Uh, the 53, probably the big winner of that whole situation, able to clear the 22. However, not able to clear the 18. So he may still end up getting freight trained on the outside here, Trevor, uh, if he can't slide up in front of that 18 or right behind him uh, in that top line. We'll see what happens. That's the battle for second place. Still continuing down here into one and two is Stanger trying to do everything he can to hold off the 53 of Duda. But Duda doing a really good job rolling that, I guess you technically call it the middle line around here uh, as he's not all the way at the wall, but doing a good job trying to pinch that 18 up. A little bit of contact made, but finally clears the 18 of Stanger. Stanger thought about a crossover move there, but he doesn't quite get that done and now falls in line and Duda up to second justice. And that was a great job using that, that middle line to uh, get around the 18 machine. Yeah, you see some things happen there that if you're a guy like myself, take that for a learning experience, some, some places we might go, Trevor. So yeah, I think uh, he really showed you there how to roll that middle line, make it work for you. Uh, you can get tight on a guy's door. He's in the preferred lane, but you can kind of keep momentum because you're not just way out of that preferred line. So a uh, very good execution there. We see the top, you know, seven, eight. So get sorted out. The seven gets up in the wall there, brings the 61 into the battle, but they straighten it back out. Uh, it kind of single files out, and these guys are going to wait just a minute, and then they're going to get impatient in about six, seven laps, feeling the end of the stage coming on. Yeah, well, uh, we'll see how it plays out. The, the area of concern for me, and I think uh... – one thing we might have to watch out for, Justice, and I noticed it in practice is uh, turn number one. There's a opening there at the entrance to turn number one, and it kind of juts out into the racing line. If you're not, uh, if you're getting squeezed a little bit too much, we might see a car uh, collect some barrels at some point over the course of this race. So one point to watch there is Tyler Truex got up into the wall a little bit, trying to run down the 33 of Tomlinson. But uh, we'll, we'll see if that comes into, into play at all over the course of the night. 
Okay. Not only will they collect some barrels, they'll also collect some Hot Wheels uh, and a few buddies. So, yeah, those uh, you got to be careful there. That that opening does jut out a little bit, especially when you're trying to run the high line. Uh, if this was a low lane racetrack, that wouldn't even be a thought in anybody's mind. But uh, considering how high up there you want to run, it's definitely a thought in everybody's mind. Of, uh, make sure not to hit that. Uh, you know, you kind of think that same way, Trevor, to track we go to, like Gateway, has that same thing in the middle of the back stretch. So be very careful. But these guys seem to be maneuvering that pretty safely so far uh, with no issues. Uh, you know, guys close, but not so close that you feel uncomfortable. We just kind of remain single file here, but the 22 is going to take a look underneath the 18, Trevor. And try to take that look to the inside of the 18. You're not going to have that momentum, but Tyler Truex is going to be with a big dive down to the inside as he's going to slide it through three and four. And holy cow, what a move by Tyler as he comes up in front of the 22 of Tarasca, but just like that has to give it up. But it was almost a net gain of two spots, but net gain one currently is he's by Tomlinson and trying to hold on to that as they continue battling down the back straightaway. Yeah, I think this is going to work out to be a net gain regardless because he just made the move stick uh, and everybody kind of split and let him have the room. Now, if he can use that same move as Duda here, I uh, know we see him. He's going to try the slider again on the 22 of Kyle Tarask. And if he can slide up, I don't know that Kyle Tarask is going to lift a uh, second time, Trevor, or avoid him at least. Yeah, that's the that's the one thing you got to worry about. And here goes Vial with the big slide job again. Going to try that same move. Contact made between Tarasca and Truex. And thankfully, Vial didn't have enough momentum. Otherwise, we might have seen a couple of cars go spinning around there, Justice. But yeah, those big slide jobs like that, you uh, you you get one. As a driver, yeah. <laughs> you, you give up one. The second time, you're not lifting, and you're just driving over the guy in front of you. So we'll, we'll see. Tereska had one pulled on him. We'll see if he how nice he is to Truex if he does it again. But Truex right now content to kind of ride in line. Here goes Vile, though, trying to get that move on Tomlinson, trying to pull it off, and just doesn't have that momentum out of turn number two. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what's heating up, Trevor. That battle for the lead is getting ready to see those same sliders thrown uh, as Jared Duda has closed that gap to a couple of car lengths. Uh, I've seen him closing it lap by lap. He's rolling that middle line real well again, uh, just on that 92's bumper. At some point, do we see him pull the, ty the Tyler Truex move that we just saw? We'll see what happens. And, uh, you know, if you're a driver, you're taking note of that, that line that he's running and how fast he is. Speaking of Tyler Truex, there he goes with a big slide job, gets two spots, and now the crossover move by Tarasca in the back of the field is going to be for third position. Tarasca is going to get it back from the 69 machine as they're throwing sliders left, right, and center. At the back half of this field, the battle for third all the way to seventh position is Truex finally going to be cleared. And I know we were watching the battle for the front, Justice, but I went back and saw that just in time to see Truex go essentially three wide through three and four, and this time gets those two spots. Yeah, and this time holding it. He's, he's now got the preferred lane. Uh, nobody else has shown quite as much confidence in that move behind him so uh he may safely kind of be there now and he can shift his focus to catching that uh 92 and 53 uh as that battle continues to be very hot uh i would say close to simmering here trevor yeah we finally get the the, the third place through seventh place battles kind of settled down and here we go for the lead it's gonna be jared duda he's looked a couple times to the inside of the 92 of, of manji but manji kind of just running the, the, the line of the 53 machine, holding them off the best he can. But at some point, I expect to see that 53 machine try to pull a slide job or just continue to kind of just work his nose to the inside of this 92 and eventually get him out of that middle line that it seems Duda wants to run. Yeah, as these guys are about to pass the line, makes 10 to go to the stage here, Trevor. I, I wonder how patient Duda is going to remain as you see a little bit of contact there in the three or in the one, sorry. Uh, and he's just all over that bumper. Just so hard to make this pass happen if you're Jared Duda uh, without doing a slide job because the 92 is also a very fast car, right? Manji's proven that kind of all night, worked his way past some guys rolling that same line. So now they're door to door. Can Jared Duda finish the, uh, the execution of this move? I think this is where Manji's just going to try to pinch him as much as he can underneath that kind of middle groove, keep him below that that white uh, that white line there through the center. But Duda just does a much better job rolling the center of the corner, it seems like, than Manji. Manji giving up a little bit of time here down into one and two. And can Duda finally pull it off out of turn number two? Looks like he's going to be clear, but Manji with the run off the top. And here they go, Justice back into three and four. Yeah, Manji just looks like he's so tight in the middle because he's having to drive deeper on entry, and we finally see Jared Duda execute the pass. 
Uh, and we get a caution. It sounded like something on the back stretch there. Uh, and it looks like it involves the 66 of Robbie Walton once again. Yeah, or something happened to the 66 machine of Robbie Walton as we were watching that battle for the lead. We'll get a replay of that pulled up real quick and see what's brought out our third caution of the night is Robbie Walton heading through one and two. And a little bit of contact between the 61 and the three machine in front of him. And Walton's just kind of an innocent bystander and all that. Justice as Kenneth Smith and Matt Garrett came together there on the exit of turn number two. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what, at the end of the night, Trevor, Robbie Walton's going to write a book called Innocent Bystander, because that's been pretty much what he has been the entire race. Every time there's a wreck, he just seems to be in the worst possible spot. Uh, you know, I know they say a lot of times in racing, you make your own luck, but you got a pretty good argument for, I can't change my luck when I'm just on the track. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty tough one there for Robbie Walton. Seems to be that way for that uh, 66 machine. couple cars down pit road, though. And a surprising move, Kyle Tarasca, Greg Vile, down pit road here on lap 65, uh, about five laps before we get to the stage in. So don't hate it. The flip, flip the stage around here, as they call it, Justice, and uh, get that track position on the other end of this when we get to that stage break. Uh, so not a bad call from them, but in doing so, it's allowed Tyler Truex now to close in on that battle that we saw for the lead. Uh, and James Stanger now up to fourth with Nicholas Tomlinson, Paul Mancini, Patrick Rapaldi, Kenneth Smith, Brian Hayes, and Jeff Sickless will now be the top 10 uh, with the kind of the, the shakeup in uh, the pit stops there. Yeah, the hardest part for Tyler Truex here, you finally get to get involved in the battle. And what's your reward? You get to restart on the bottom row, my guy. Uh, that's very tough when you're having to restart down there. Stanger may get a little bit better launch there. But uh, I, I believe if anybody's going to make a move, we're going to see Tyler Truex sling a three wide slider and see if he can make a move for the uh, stage win here. I mean, I think he's given MLB pitchers a, a run for their money on how disgusting the, their sliders are because he's thrown some really good ones so far here tonight. Will he get another good one in here before we get to the stage break? We're going to have about a three lap shootout to get to that lap 70 stage break. It's going to be led here by Jared Duda. Tony Mangi are going to lead us back to the green flag as they work through three and four, waiting to see Barney wave that green flag in the air. And there it is in Manji. Not, with a pretty good launch there for himself on that inside line, not letting Duda get clear of him as they head into one and two. But there goes Tyler Truex, Justice, not waiting, wasting any time. Is there going to be three wide on the exit? But it's not going to stick for him. He's going to have to give that spot up and maybe a couple more. Yeah, Tyler Truex in a position where he can just make that move, right? He's pretty safe into the next round. Uh, so you make that move knowing. Oh, he's oh, wrecking. And he's wrecking. And, the, and Manji in the 92 car wrecks as well. Uh, I'm guessing that will get us to the stage here, Trevor. Um, and that that's pretty tough if you're either one of those guys. Kind of make your way all the way up there from the back uh, one way or the other and then uh, end up a little bit wrecked off there. So we'll see what happens here. We're going to get to take a look at this caution replay. Nine car kind of slings his way down, um, gets up here, but the wrecking was already happening in front of him. So... Uh, yeah, it just looked like from my perspective, when we were watching it live there, Trevor, 69 and 92 both uh, just running the inside lane, trying to grip up, make a little contact and trying to keep it off of people and you just spin out when that happens. Uh, that happens in basically every race car I've ever driven. Yeah, I think that's exactly what happened. You'll see it right here. Next to turn number four, Manji, Truex both slide up into uh, Stanger and I believe Mancini respectively. And then nowhere for Vile, and I believe that's uh, Austin Pavy in the 83. Nowhere for them to go as the track kind of gets uh, jammed up there as they were still spinning sideways. And uh, another penalty there for the 69 machine. We'll see him go to the back of the uh, field again. And another back-to-front challenge for the 92 of Manji and Tyler Truex ensues here, Justice, after, this, uh, after these round of pit stops. Yeah, these guys are going to have to put their boots on. They're about to have to go to work because no more stage breaks to bail you out, only the yellow flags that come out naturally so. Uh, we'll see what happens. I, I guarantee there will be a yellow flag or two that come out naturally, uh, especially late as desperation sets in. Guys wanting to get that uh, that win, take that checkered flag home. That's going to be a you know, win and end of the next round of the playoffs. So for drivers like Stanger, uh, Tomlinson, and Grapaldi, a, a win here tonight would be huge for their for their you know safety into the next round of the playoffs. And we'll see how that's going to play out. Kyle Tarasca. One of the drivers that we saw come down pit road earlier on, right, right before that last caution in the stage break, going to inherit the race lead. Jared Duda going to win the battle off of pit road, followed by James Stanger, Nicholas Tomlinson, and Patrick Capaldi, it would appear, uh, is how they're going to come off pit road for the top five positions as we get set back up here, Justice, for this restart. 
Yeah, the 22 making that strategy call, just as you had discussed, Trevor, right? Go out there, flip the stage, try to get this track position, make something happen. What we've seen is kind of when you drive out there and get the lead, uh, you absolutely have the opportunity to just stay up there. But you have to make a great jump here uh, if you're Kyle Taraska and you're going to be restarting from that inside lane. You make a great jump, get in front of that 53, and just see how long you can hold him off. Yeah, we'll see what he, what he's able to do here and where he likes to restart. We've seen the 53 take the outside line. Pretty much the leaders on all the restarts take the outside line. It looks like Taraska going to take the inside line on this restart, which interesting call from the 22 machine. But we'll see how it works out for him here. Justice is I don't think that that's going to be the preferred line that you're going to want to restart in as the race leader. Yeah, I, I thought race leader had choose option here, but perhaps not. Uh, either way, you do have the launch, so... You get to decide when you go here once it goes green. If you can time this just right, uh, you can definitely get up and clear that 53 into turn one. Uh, and just, again, see how long you can hold him off. Maybe you get up there making burn his stuff up out of frustration. We'll see what happens. Tarasco on the loud pedal, but it's an equally great launch from the 53 of Dudas. They're going to stay side by side into one and two. This is the line that you really don't want to be in as the race leader on that inside line, but trying to pinch him up near the wall is Tarasca. She's not going to be able to do so, but they're going to stay side by side. Justice to three and four, and Tarasca really going to send it in there and slide up in front of the 53, who gets a little bit of a tap from the 18, and that's actually going to help him out as he gets a great exit out of three and four. Yeah, and now we get to see him work that lane that he worked so hard to pass a couple guys. Oh, and he gets the 22 up into the wall. Use him up a little bit. Now the 7 is down there. The 7 for sure. Uh, we have seen him be aggressive a couple times. He is definitely going to try to get down there uh, and make a move on that 53 car. I just can't wait to see how electric this is about to be, Trevor. So far, so good. And Mancini trying to work that inside line to make it work. He's pulled a couple of uh, pretty aggressive moves down to the inside, but so far kept it clean as he battles with the 22 of Tarasca, who almost got back to the rear bumper of Jared Duda a couple laps ago. I wasn't for sure if he was going to try to give him a little bit of a love tap, but trying to hold off this seven to Mancini, who's put up a great fight on the inside line. Then you got Stanger, Vile, Tomlinson, uh, Leach, and Manji, who's trying to work his way back up through the field. But I think Mancini just is finally going to have to concede that second place position to the 22 of Tarasca. Yeah, you just once you're down there for a little bit, you're taking life out of the tires every lap that you're trying not to track out of corners. And, uh, it makes it very hard to, to save anything for the long run. You don't want to bring anybody else into it. If you feel like third kind of puts you where you need to be, you're definitely okay with uh, sitting up there. But, you know, you, you want to make something happen. So he'll eventually cool the tires back off. He'll make a dive, try to get back past that 22. But... I'm going to tell you, I want to see which one's going to throw the big slider on the 53 and uh, make something happen, man. Don't let him get too far away from you. Try a couple things. That's kind of been the story of, of the, the the races here that, that since we started covering is once Dude has gotten to the lead, he's been able to pull away to about second, second and a half, two seconds over the field. Uh, apart from last week at Richmond, but again, Duda had, had mentioned to us that he wasn't a big fan of the bigger racetracks, but now back here on the the half mile racetrack, the quarter mile racetracks, feeling pretty comfortable as he tries to pull away from the 22 of Tarasca. There goes Mancini though, with a big dive into turn number four and pulls up right in front of the 22 machine. But here comes Tarasca with the crossover as he's gonna have the momentum into turn number one and he's gonna go for the big slide job and actually gets to the, almost to the quarter panel of the 53. But here comes the crossover again as we just trade slide jobs. Yeah, man, are we watching a dirt race right now, Trevor? Uh, these guys making it real fun to watch. Like I said, I knew at some point the 7 was going to get uh, get back by that 22. He was going to throw that aggressive slider. Uh, now I'm interested to see, can he get close enough to that 53 uh, that he feels like that slide job is a, a good idea? Uh, one of the things you see with them throwing the slide job, Trevor, at least that I've noticed, is when they go to slide down there, they're jamming the brakes kind of in the middle of the corner and really uh, leaving marks on the track. Uh, as we go on board here with Paul Mancini, see a little bit of uh, what he's looking at trying to get to that bumper, that 53, is right now the nine of Greg Viles putting his name in the hat for race leader. And here goes the slide from the 77. He's going to dive it down into three and four, get to the side panel of the 53 machine, not be able to clear him, but he's going to be door-to-door -door with him as they go down the front straightaway and going to give it another shot. Justice down here into one and two, and this time going to be really aggressive with it. Up the track he goes. Not going to have enough speed. A little bit of contact made, and Vile just sitting there waiting to see what's going to happen as he's now door-to-door -door with Mancini, but Mancini not giving up, trying to get past the 53 of Duda. 
as that's a three-way battle for the lead here as they rock it down the front straightaway. Yeah, you see the nine of Bile getting a little bit of a run on Duda's back bumper because Duda's kind of having to react to what the seven's doing. Now the nine of Bile is going to force it three wide. And, uh, oh, we're going to get contact. a wreck for the lead here. Oh, that is massive. But these boys keep it straight. Not a whole lot of damage there. So I think we're going to basically line them up, re-rack them just like they were. Uh, and we're going to see who's willing to be aggressive here now. That was fun to watch. A little three-wide action there. It was a, a safe little slide. I think it kind of caused there by Vile throwing his nose in the middle of that between Mancini and Duda and everybody able to hang on to it. But here's a good look at it, at it as we get the replay pulled up. It's going to be out of turn number two. And here we go, Justice on the exit. Uh, uh, Vile trying to make it three-wide. Yeah, trying to make it three wide, seven, maybe just not quite realizing that the nine's nose was still there and uh, just kind of initiates the contact. And uh, again, great talent. All those guys keep it straight, keep it rolling, and nobody in the back of the field piled into anything. These guys are ready to go. Uh, I would expect this caution probably to get shortened, Trevor, if I just had to guess. Wait and see if anybody likes to come down pit road. And here they come down pit road, couple of takers. Maybe this is the time. To take those tires is Vile, Duda, Tarasca, Stanger. Pretty much the entire top 10 couple of drivers do stay out. But here comes everybody down for what could be the final pit stop of the race. You're going to tell me these guys were out here slinging those sliders around on old tires, Trevor? Oh, this is about to get real fun. If that's the case, as we're closing in on 60 to go in the race, uh, these guys may just run them soft for about 30 laps, and then uh, they might get real testy, Trevor just from I, what we saw on that run. I'm excited to see it. I did see the right side of the 53 of Jared Duda's car in the air. So right side tires on the 53 machine, left side tires going on that machine as well, along with the 92 uh, of Manji. He's getting four fresh tires. A couple drivers electing to take just two tires. So this is really going to change up the running order here, Justice, as we work this caution. And we'll give you a full field rundown once we kind of figure out where everybody's going to cycle out of this thing. Yeah, I'm going to tell you who's back at the front. The car we saw uh, get spun around earlier, the four, Jonathan Leach, ends up back up front. The nine of Greg Vile right behind him. James Stanger, Kyle Taraska, Nicholas Tomlinson there in fifth. Jared Duda looks like he's going to come out sixth. So uh, the most traffic he's had to work through tonight, I'm interested to see how patient he's going to be. That's going to be uh, a fun driver to watch come through the field. I mean, we've seen it, it, We know it's possible. Uh, Tony Mangi's done it. Tyler Truex has done it. Mangi's done it twice uh, at this point, working on his third attempt at this. So we'll we'll see if he's successful with it. But we know it's possible. The The question is, how much life are you going to take out of those tires trying to do that? But right now on the restart, getting ready for it, it's going to be Jonathan Leach, Vile, Tarasca, Stanger, Duda, Tomlinson, Capaldi, Pavia, Mangi, uh, Sickless, Hayes, uh, Tyler Truex, Mancini, and Kenneth, uh, Kenneth Smith. Give me the drivers lining up for this restart. Uh, Matt Garrett calling it tonight. Robbie Walton trying to get caught back up. He's going to be the final car on this restart. But it's going to be the four machine. Jonathan Leach leading us back to the green flag as he's actually making contact with Vile already, Justice. And we're almost three wide, and oh. we haven't even got to the green flag. Whoa. We're going to get this sorted out. They get it sorted out. Four gets a launch here. Um, that was intriguing, to say the least. But uh, I'm going to tell you what, Trevor. New tires or not. I don't think any of these guys are going to be scared to just go full sin. From what I've seen tonight, they know they want to get up front and just see if they can hold that line. Uh, as we see the four car trying to do that right now with the nine car peeking his nose back underneath him for the lead. I mean, we'll see what happens. Three wide behind him, one car into the wall, grinding along the wall, but no harm, no foul. And here comes Vile trying to get to that inside of the four machine of Leach, who, uh, you know, that's one way to make sure you get a good restart is just to... Uh, Drive into the door of the car inside of you. He'll back out of it. You can get a good launch, but Vile giving him a little bit of a bump and a hurry up. And there he oh. goes. Spins him around. Contact made. Duda involved. The 18 of Stanger involved. The 22 of Tarasca. The 33 of, I believe, that's going to be uh, Tomlinson also involved as well. Justice, again, the 66 machine of Robbie Walton. <laughs> He's, uh, he's already working on that memoir, Trevor. I promise you he's going to have it written by the end of the race. But, man, that looked like one of our league races, Trevor, a pile up at the barrels uh, there for just a second on the exit barrels of pit road. So, um, yeah, just contact between the leaders there, the nine. Uh, I don't know if that was frustration or just misjudged, but, yeah, all of a sudden you got three cars parked right here in the junkyard. So, um these guys especially at 22 of kyle tarasca i cannot wait to see him try to run back to the front here yeah i think uh still a little bit of uh 
I don't know if it was frustration from the restart or we're just trying to give him a little hurry up, but on board here with Vile as uh, he heads into three and four and you see it gets in there deep, makes a little bit of contact, makes a lot of contact and the four goes around and everybody else kind of caught up in that. And I think uh, I think for Robbie Walton Justice, I think he's on volume number two. Uh, I think we're done with volume one in the memoir. I think we're yeah. on to volume two of this, <laughs> this, this story here. Yeah, he's, uh, he's getting ready to write, write the next Twilight series at this point, Trevor. Uh, yeah, we see the, the nine car of Greg Vile was given an EOL there. Um, yeah, that was interesting. I can tell you anytime I've ever hit somebody that hard on corner exit, it was definitely to give them a little hurry up. It was never an accident. Yeah, it was one of the, one of those things. But as we work our, uh, I believe, eighth caution of the night, we're going to take a quick break here, step aside, catch our breath, get a drink of water, and we'll be right back for the restart here of the TTR Short Track Series on the Revo Racing Network. Island Homes has served our community's roofing needs since 1986. Our local team is proud to stand behind each roof we install and relationships we are building with our community. Highland Homes, where quality is our legacy. Highland Homes has served our community's roofing needs since 1986. Our local team is proud to stand behind each roof we install and relationships we are building with our community. Highland Homes, where quality is our legacy. And we're back just like that after that quick commercial break here on the uh, the Revo Racing Network. My name is Trevor Earhart, and joining me in the booth again tonight is Justice Murphy with Rob Rader running the production as we get ready to finish up the eighth caution here tonight on lap 98, working or working lap 98 here of 150. And uh, Justice, it's been entertaining so far. We've seen a lot of slide jobs, and as the laps continue to wind down here, I expect to see a, a lot more as drivers try to work their way from the back to the front and try to hold on to the track position they've got. Yeah, the electricity we're about to feel here, Trevor, is the 92 of uh, Tony Manji has ended up back at the front. Uh, and now we get to see him control the race a little bit. Guys like the 77 of Brian Hayes, 61 of Ken Smith oh, already haven't been up here, and we're wrecking already. Um, that can happen when you got guys that haven't been up here all night and guys that have been. Those guys that have been just want to get you out of their way. But it uh, looked like a little bit of incidental contact between the 22 and the 77, but... Uh, we will have to get that replay pulled back up for you, ladies and gentlemen. Just like that, ninth caution of the night is out here on lap 150. Uh, 50 laps to go left in, here in tonight's race. But right here, as we work through one and two on the restart, uh, the 77 of Hayes just drifts up in front of the 22 of Tarasca, the 33. Tomlinson gets spun around as well, and then it's just a stack up from there involving a couple of drivers. Ryan Truex gets... A little bit of a uh, backed into there as he tries to drive by the 77 machine. So a little bit more damage for the 69, but uh, nothing that I think that uh, no more damage. than I think that that 69 machines had pretty much from the drop of the green flag justice. And we'll see if he can again, work his way from the back of the field front. But uh, I think the story here, Tony Manji back to the lead, one of the, the faster cars of the night. Um, and we'll see how that's going to work out for him. Actually. Yeah. I'm sorry, he is back at the front. It's, it's uh, Tyler Truex in the 77 machine, uh, tail end of the lead lap here. Yeah, the nine as well, I believe, is also in that same situation here. But, yeah, Tony Manji, the leader. Uh, and that, uh, honestly, Trevor, I, I've had that happen so many times where it's just like there's a new car up there and you're not sure how he rolls to the middle of the corner and you just make contact and you hope it doesn't cause a wreck, but uh, just contact in the wrong place caused that a little bit. So, uh, nothing they won't sort out as these guys will go back green. But yeah, that 92 car, again, the back-to-front challenge, he's done it now twice, a little differently each time. But, uh, yeah, now he gets the battle with the 61. at seven of Paul Mancini right back in third place. And you know how electric that was last time, Trevor. Yeah, Mancini's been, uh, with the, uh, the level of slide jobs, been right up there with Tyler Truex on just uh, making them – as audacious as possible and getting them to stick. So looking forward to seeing what he's going to be able to do. And then I got to give this shout out to the 61 of Kenneth Smith the driver. We haven't talked much about justice. We watched him in practice and he was running kind of the unorthodox around the, the white line, basically around the bottom of the racetrack in practice, but biggest mover of the night up nine spots up to second place. I mean, he's doing something right as he uh, is going to line up here to the inside of Tony Manji on this restart. 
I'm going to tell you the number one thing he's doing right is he stayed out of trouble, Trevor. I haven't called his name a whole lot in the involvement in Rex. Just uh, He's got the exact opposite memoir being written of Robbie Walton tonight. <laughs> so we, uh, we see the pace car pull off as they're getting ready to go green. Got a little stack up here in the back, uh, but they are getting organized. And again, I'm watching this seven car right here because this is going to be fun. Will Mancini make a, a slide job attempt out here into turn number one on the restart. Green flag is out. It's Kenneth Smith, Tony Mangi side by side on this restart. Jerry Duda again with a good restart in the third place position. It's a battle for the lead. It's going to be side by side. Mancini electing not to make a slide job here as the uh, top four stay side by side. The 33 of Tomlinson going to be able to get a, get a spot. Oh, but hard contact as the 61 of Smith gets into the wall after contact with the 53, the 66. Of Robbie Walton caught up in a bad spot again. The 18 of Stanger goes around as a carnage ensues through three and four and cautions finally out, I believe, for Stanger rejoining the racetrack. Yeah, I believe that Robbie Walton's ready to write that final book at any point now, Trevor. Uh, it's once again, wrong place, wrong time. And uh, again, looked like a similar situation where uh, just people not used to the 61 being up there trying to get used to what he's doing and uh, misjudged just a little bit. Uh, what he was going to do there. Yeah, I, I think he got a little bit loose to the inside of Manji and it kind of stacked him up as we had a look here at what happened on the exit of the turn of the uh, loop turn of the around the entrance of turn four. Just kind of gets up into the 92 and then just kind of get a bad, bad hook there from the 53. And it was kind of a tough break. Nowhere for uh, Robbie Walton to go. And then something happened to James Stanger kind of uh, at, in the middle of all this. And I think that's actually what led to the caution was the 18 machine getting spun around. Um, for for some incident, for uh, back to Robbie Walton, he's he's writing the third book. But good good news for him, we've got him covered. If he wants the motion picture, it's already made. We've we've got you covered there, Robbie. Yeah, it's not often you get the motion picture before you get the book, but I, I like his strategy here. You know, you, you release that in the opposite order and uh, see if you can get famous both ways. I, I love it. You know, it's maybe that's the the publishing rights he was waiting for. Hey, I've got the movie already made. Help me get this book pushed out. But, yeah, it's a tough night there for the, the 66 of Robbie Walton. Uh, really do uh, hate that that's how that's going for him. But we see these top four guys stay out here. Tony Mangi, Paul Mancini, uh, the 83 of Austin Pavia, and the 22 of Kyle Chiraska. Uh This is going to be interesting. Again, now you got the 7 and the 22 uh, who have been probably second and third most aggressive with the slide jobs right behind Tyler Truex. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see uh, Jerry Duda come down, came down pit road and then stopped at the end of the pit road and gave a couple more positions. Caution, uh, why we saw the contact with the, the uh, 30, the, I'm sorry, the 61 and the 53, it was a contact between the 23 of Jeff Sickless and James Singer that sent the 18 spinning around uh, to the inside through three and four. That is actually what brought out the caution. I think Duda coming down pit road, Justice, maybe get some damage fixed from that contact he had with Kenneth Smith uh, there. That's going to send him to the back of the field. I think he's going to restart uh, somewhere back in eighth position. About so eighth a lot, place. Yeah, yeah, a lot of traffic for him to work through. But I'm right there with you. The the 92 and the 7 now are going to be on that front row, and this should be a pretty interesting restart. Then you've got Tarasca uh, with Brian Hayes, who we saw had issues when he was up here. And then another driver that we haven't seen up front, Austin Pavia. We've seen him in a couple of incidents in that 83 machine, but here he is going to restart in third position. I, I'm going to tell you something right now, Trevor. If I'm the 92 and I've watched what the seven's been doing all night, I am certainly not taking the high line on the restart as the leader. Um, Paul Mancini, if he gets a good jump here, is going to throw a slider and going to slide in front of you. But, hey, you know what? 92 thinks he can get a good launch here and, and get clear of him. But we're about to see, Trevor, and uh, this is going to be fun. Here we go, Mancini versus Manji on the restart. Will Mancini pull the slide job? We'll wait and see as they head into one. And there goes Mancini. There goes Tarasca, both of them all the way down to the white line, almost to the grass. Mancini not clear as there goes Manji getting clear of him now. But Mancini not going to give up. Justice is through three and four. Here he goes again. And this time going to slide up right in front of the 92. There's contact made. And that's now going to send Manji to the inside. But Mancini going to be in the preferred line through one and two. I told you this was going to be electric. The 92 clears him here, and 7 going to have a little bit of a run, though. 22 still trying to slide his way forward. 
Uh, just sorts itself out, but the seven right back down to the bottom. And again, the 92 reacting, going lower than he needs to. Now he's up in the marbles. We got contact with the 83 and the four back behind. Uh, this is everything that we thought it was about to be. The 22 continues to try to throw the slider. Oh, contact, contact with the nine and spins him out, and that's going to be a caution. Uh, is Jared Duda also involved there? Vile gets spun around, I believe, off the nose of Jared Duda. Uh, and more contact made for those two. And uh, I think I saw another car going around on the back straightaway as we've had another driver call it a night here tonight. Kenneth Smith going to call it a night for the evening. But here's the replay of what happened down the back straightaway through one and two. You see the slide jobs by Tarasca and uh, Mancini. That gets everybody checked up and looks like Duda just kind of runs over the back of the nine machine of Vile. And I believe the 83 of Austin Pavia gets clipped there. But it's a two-car incident on the exit of turn number two. I'm going to tell you what, Trevor. we got a couple of these cars starting to look like local short track cars very quickly. Uh, just beat up and panels beat in a little bit. Uh, yeah, the nine probably reacting a little bit to both sliders there, having to check up. He got a little loose, and Jared Duda just kind of polishes him off you know, through the back of him there. But... Uh, I don't, not much really the 53 can do there uh, when you've got so much going on there and everything's going on. You're trying to figure out what are you going to do? How are you going to react? And he's in the back of the nine there. As we see a whole group of cars again, uh, pitting here, seven, 92, 22, four, 33. Um, these guys coming in, I got something left down here on pit road that they need. So the, the one thing I forgot about with these street stock cars, and it was a, it was a big deal last week at Richmond because of how big the racetrack is, the, the tiny fuel tanks that these things have. Uh, so probably a fuel pit stop here for these guys. Uh, maybe if you got a set of tires, like a left side left, you take those. Uh, so we'll see if I, I didn't see anybody going up on jacks, but um, the fuel stop here to at least make sure you get it to the end. And this is going to kind of shake things up again up at the front of the field. This is going to leave James Stanger, Patrick Capaldi, uh, up at the front of this field. Talk about needing to win, Trevor, that double zero Patrick Rapaldi does. Um, but again, if the, the fuel tank's being that small, um, can he make it from here what he's got packed in that car? So uh, we will have to wait with bated breath here. But he definitely, uh, I think, will be very aggressive trying to get by that 18 car, see if he can put himself in the wind and go and get that, uh, that win that he so desperately needs. Patrick Capaldi, James Stanger, down pit road, last on lap 108. Austin Pavia, the last down pit road on lap 95. Those are the three cars that stayed out. Jonathan Leach beats the 92 of Tony Mangi off of pit road along with uh, the 33 of Nicholas Tomlinson, and Paul Mancini. Kyle Tarasco, Robbie Walton, Brian Hay is going to be the top 10 on this restart with Jared Duda, Greg Vile, Jeff Sickless uh, down there in the 13 cars currently out on track. Tyler Truex has pulled it down pit road in the 69 machine. Uh, and I think he's called it a night and turned into the race control for the rest of this race justice, as I believe the race controller not showing up. So Tyler Shurek feeling the damage a little bit too much on that 69 machine has called it a night as well. Joining Kenneth Smith and Matt Garrett on pit road as the car's out of this race. Yeah, this is starting to look like a Delaware restart here, Trevor. Uh, not sure what's going on with the lineup here, but they get it sorted out here as they're coming to green. The 18 car James Stanger going to take them to the, to the flag. And Stanger with a great start. Grapaldi um, off by like three or four car lengths there before he even got to the green flag. The four machine of Leach trying to be a little bit aggressive. Almost made contact. Pavia down there getting crossed up by the 92 of Manji. Three wide on the exit of turn number two. Everybody gets by the 83 machine. So he falls through the field. And now we'll wait and see what's going to happen up here at the front as Mancini Tarasca try to work their way up with Manji. Is there going to be three wide with the 33? Contact made, beating and banging down the front straightaway incredible that that wasn't a wreck great save by those guys we see the seven doing uh doing seven things again as he is slid down there trying to get up in front of the 33 uh no room to do that this time if he doesn't clear him naturally the 92 is down there so uh seven gets a nice good clear they're gonna make a run uh james stanger kind of in the lead safely as we're three wide again the 22 throws a massive slider uh checks up and he ends up middle three wide uh, falling back some more contact with Jared Duda. 92 oh, okay. gets spun around from the 22 uh, due to the contact with the 53 there. And that brings out our, what, 11th caution, Trevor? 12th caution? Uh, somewhere in that range. But, uh, you know, typically uh, as, a, as a fan or, or whatever, when you have this many cautions, you, it's kind of a, a boring race because they're just wrecking all the time. This is anything but boring. These slide jobs have been incredible. And right here it was just a checkup 
as the 22 got uh, checked up with a big slide job, got help from Jerry Duda, and that got him back to the rear bumper of the, the 92 of Manji. And Manji, the unfortunate recipient, uh, I think he's going to start uh, justice joining in on that book that Robbie Walton's writing, and he's going to start his own memoir here tonight as he goes to the back for the third time here. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. These is this is one of those nights. I, I guarantee you, after the race, uh, Tyler is going to come in here and go, "Sorry for the wreck fest, boys." And we're going to have to explain to him that while it while it may have been a little bit uh, wreck filled, at least it was entertaining. These boys are slinging it around. Uh, if you're going to do it, do it big. I love watching this. Yeah, I mean that's the that's the thing with short track racing. You know you're going to have your beating and banging. You know you're going to have your cautions. But, man, they have made it just so entertaining to watch tonight with just how audacious these slide jobs have been. And, and they've been able to pull it off. It's just kind of the, the checkups that get to you. And, and with 25 to go, I just expect them to get even more, uh, you know, wild with the, with the moves that they're going to make to try to hold this off. Working the 12th caution of the night. Uh, and if you like more great racing action like you're seeing here tonight uh, for the TTR Short Track Series here on the Revo Racing Network, turn tune in to Monday night for the Racing Revolution Coastal Financial Truck Series as they go to their third race of the season uh, on Monday night. And then if you want more racing action after that, uh, the Racing Revolution Cup Series is going to be at Talladega on Wednesday night on the V-Speed uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and then for more, if you want to hear more from us, tune into the RR After Dark uh, podcast over on the Racing Revolution uh, YouTube channel. So you can find us, uh, you know, various racing uh deals with uh, the truck series on monday night back here wednesday night uh, as they go to uh, the bull ring and then uh, the of course the podcast justice uh, that gets recorded on fridays a little bit of a hiatus on that but we're working on bringing that one back but you can get caught up on all the archived ep episodes over on the, the racing revolution youtube channel yeah we're just pounding out the content trevor uh plenty of racing action plenty of great content on our instagram facebook pages and uh, just really giving people plenty of chances to watch cars on track, which if you're a true race fan, you pretty much will watch any of them just because you love the sound. Uh, and honestly, even on the sim, every time I'm in a car or watching, I, I just feel like I can smell the burnt rubber, gasoline, and victory. Yeah, it's the the one thing I always forget. The YouTube or the, the Instagram, the Facebook page is a little bit... Uh... A little bit old for all that stuff, but go sh check out the Racing Revolution stuff over on their Instagram, Facebook pages. As we get ready for the re restart, James Stanger going to take off with a great restart over Grapaldi. Mancini going to be in that top line trying to work his way past the double zero. The four machine of Leach going to take it all the way to the bottom, but Calamity in turn number in one back. as there's a four car pile up. And the 66 again of Robbie <laughs> Walton caught up in this one with Brian Hayes. And I'm not sure who the third car was. I believe it was the. Uh, uh, I think it was sickless maybe but a third car caught up in all that it's calamity ensues on the restart i think robbie walton's ready to turn himself into kyle bush but he's just gonna permanently drive backwards uh, as opposed to just pulling down pit road driving backwards um these boys are man they're slinging it around uh, i'm sure that tyler's in their ear telling them boys let's clean it up let's make a you know 10 15 lap run to the finish here and uh let's put on a show throw the sliders but make them clean uh as this here looks like maybe it was just a checkup situation uh guys excuse me 92 actually got in a little deep there uh the 66 just the unfortunate victim and then uh head head on with the 77 who was backwards in the wall i, th I think the uh, i think the throttle got hung up on uh poor old robbie's car there I mean, that thing's been beat up so many times. I'm sure he's got throttle stick, gear linkage is bent, brakes are, are, are shot, and uh, it's just been a rough night for that 66 machine. And it, it was a, he got a lot of help on that one from the 92 of Manji, who's, you know, kind of in the same boat, just trying to get to the front of the field again, just a little bit over aggressive there on that restart. Uh, and I think some frustrations boiling over for that 66 machine of Robbie Walton. But the good news for him, Justice, is he's actually in the top 10 still. He goes up and gives a little bit of a oh. shot there to, to the 53 of Jared Duda. More oh. contact made as we got beef here through one and two. This is great short track action. This is why people show up to watch, Trevor. Uh, as I, you know, the funny part is, as beat up as that Skull car is, or Copenhagen car, my apologies, I have seen a Copenhagen can or two in my time beat up that exact same way, Trevor. 
I mean, we'll get a quick look at it here. And I'm, I'm not sure something was said in race comms, but I mean, he just goes up there and punts the 53 who stops and makes, I mean, I think Jared was going for a retaliation bump there, but I mean, uh, Robbie didn't even let him get it. He just swerved back down into him. And now the 66 machine on pit road and uh, like a good, good, uh, good used can of Copenhagen. That's about what that car looks like. And I think that's going to be a, a retired race car for the 66 machine here tonight. Hey, you know, they, they would, you know what they say, if you're going to swing first, Trevor, just keep swinging. Don't let the guy swing back. So, uh, Robbie Walton taking that approach there as he swerved back down in that 53. Uh, I think you and I have done that a time or two to each other on track. So, uh, yeah, I, I completely understand. I, I want to do that way more often than I would like to admit. Um, uh, but yeah, we see the 18 signaling that he's going to take the top again on this restart again. When I have that seven down there, there's no way I want to start above him. There, no way. You know no. what's coming. No, I don't want to start above him. Or if you're going to start above him, you've got to chase him all the way down to that white line in one and two and not let him get a chance to pull that slider. But here we go. Stanger versus Mancini. Who's going to get the jump? It's going to be Stanger. But will Mancini? It's not a question of will. It's going to be a question of if it'll stick. And there he goes to the bottom. And it's not going to stick. But he's going to be side by side as they're three wide behind him due to trying to get to the inside of Taraska as we're two by two for third on back as that battle for the leads kind of settled out. Now we'll have to wait for the seven to get his momentum back, but they're three wide further in the field, two wide now as it's starting to single file out. People get set up for these runs. Yeah, we see Jared Duda now having to get in on the uh, slider exchange. So this will get real fun if you got to have maybe the, the fastest car, arguably, in the field, also having to make those moves. Uh, a little bit of desperation. He definitely wants to win. Uh, that double zero looking like he's getting ready to make the move and he gets in. Oh, the there's the barrels. <laughs> there's the barrels. And look, he collected the, all his friends just like we thought might happen, Trevor. Oh, you, you hate to see it for uh, for uh, Grapaldi there in the double zero. The man who, who needed a good run tonight, needed to win, uh, not going to look like he's going to advance here. His contact with the four machine of Leach. On the exit of turn number four down the front straightaway, that's going to uh, cause the unfortunate entrance into the barrels and a nice little uh, helicopter spin across the top of the field there just as the double zero comes to rest on the inside pit wall. There are about two or three lucky cars there. Trevor, that is impressive. As he looked like a hovercraft flying over a couple of cars. Uh, and I don't know if he actually made contact, but... This is uh, probably going to end up on a Revo clip uh, somewhere where we can share this on socials because this is a very impressive hit and flight. Clips the 33, clears the 9, clears the 92, <laughs> clears the 23. And we joked in practice about the TTR uh, space program coming into effect tonight if that were to happen. And Justice, I think we got our first car from their space program there as uh, Patrick Rapaldi doing a little bit of a, a, tw a twirl across the top of a couple of cars here. This is going to be a great on board here with the 92 of Manji. Yep. Been here, done this, Trevor. You Ooh. were in the race with me. Watched a guy fly over your head. Uh, I just happened to be the car he actually landed on, but uh, man, that is, uh, that is highlight real material. Uh, even though it was a wreck, we're going to see that clip again and again and again. Check out the Revo Racing Network's Instagram page, Facebook page to get that clip uh, or YouTube shorts. If uh, we can get around to making some YouTube shorts here, that might uh, pop up as one of our first shorts over here on the Revo Racing Network. And uh, Justin said, be a great, great short to start off the uh, start that off is uh, we get lined back up here for this restart with about 10 laps to go. And it's still going to get really <laughs> really entertaining is is they're still gonna have ample opportunities to try to pull off these moves i trevor again there's nothing i love more than seeing these cars just beat up uh it looks like you pissed somebody off and they took the hammer to it um yeah they, that's how you know they're running hard and again <laughs> i'm wondering if the 18 is going to take the top or if he learned his lesson here uh as again it's never a question if that seven is going to gonna dive it's just whether or not it's gonna stick as he takes the top again uh indicated in the uh driver text chat not the move i'd go with but the move that sanger feels comfortable with behind him he's got two cars missing a front end and that's gonna be the nine of uh Vial and the 33 of tomlinson 
who have no front bumpers, uh, helping helping with the cooling. So maybe maybe without the front bumper, the the nose damage is not going to cause that engine to overheat. But uh, the cooling uh, coefficient there on the 33 and 9 going to be really high. Right behind him, though, the 92 of Manji, he's on his third attempt to get to the front of the field. He's going to restart in sixth. Uh, Jared Duda going to restart in eighth. You've got the 23 of Cyclist up there along with the 77 machine. But Justice, here we go. Stanger going to lead us back to the green flag. A little bit of a jump from Mancini, but he's going to give that spot back up before they get to the finish line. And here comes the move oh, from the 7 machine. And Tarasca. I was about to say the 22, Trevor, came from way back there. Uh, as these moves are about to get more desperate as we're closing in on eight to go as they cross the line, Trevor. Tarasca has gone from about ninth to fourth uh, right here, and we're going to see if he can make it stick uh, as he was going to do this again. The seven does it. The 53 has a little half one. Uh -oh. uh, the seven kind of does it. The 18 crosses him over. The seven's going to maintain his lane. The 18's going to have to throw a little something here. We'll see what happens. Stanger now going to fight with uh, with the Mancini Duda. Trying to get up to third, almost contact made as the seven gets walled. There's 18 loose on exit, but here comes the 53 machine. He's now to the inside of the seven machine, but with that little slide, going to possibly lose a position to the 33. Contact oh. made between the 33 and the 22 as they go around on the exit or down the back straightaway. And caution's out. We're going to reset. And all of that, James Stanger able to hang on to the lead. And Jared Duda now up to third. <laughs> Oh, this is going to get really fun now, Trevor. We thought we had some fun. When they take the green this time, there's going to be just two laps to go. Uh, they have shown they can make the two clean laps, so it's just going to be uh, the Chili Bowl, maybe? <laughs> A replay with guys just sliding left and right. All right look, the, the, the top four restarting this race, James Stanger, Paul Mancini, Jared Duda, Tony Manji. So you have the two fastest cars of the night. Uh, back there in third and fourth, you have the man who uh, was was tied with Tyler Truex for the the most uh, disgusting slide jobs that I've seen out on a racetrack in a long time apart, or at least on the oval or on the asphalt side of things. Um, they're, I mean, they're they're driving these cars like dirt track cars. Going to restart in second, and then James Stanger, who I honestly haven't seen pull a good, like a ridiculous slide job. He's just been consistent with where he's running is going to restart in first. And I think he's going to be the man justice that uh, uh, might not come out of this the, the the prettiest when it's all said and done based on who's restarting behind him. Uh, you know the, the tortoise and the hare story there, uh, Trevor. He's trying to be the tortoise that turns up and wins the race. Not that he's slow, but he's just been steady, right? He's been there. He, he's trying to maintain his line. Uh, meanwhile... Uh, the seven has been very aggressive all night and uh, been very entertaining to watch. Uh, him and the 92 uh, have looked like uh, Larson and Bell. Like I said, uh, you know, the chili bowl, just I'm going to slide you. I'm going to slide you. We're going to go back and forth all night. Kyle Tarask has been very aggressive with it. Uh, he just may have run out of time to try to get there. But 53 knows he thinks he's the fastest car on track. If he knows it, he's going to make his move, whether it's a slide job or just going around that high side and making them pay for a bad slide job. We'll see what happens. And then don't count out Greg Vile, Jeff Sickless, Brian Hayes are back there in fifth, sixth, and seventh. I mean, if if the if something goes wrong up here at the front, which I'm going to go out on a limb and say there's a 90% chance that something's going to happen, the, one of those three could come away with either a win or a really solid finish out of this, depending on what happens here on this restart and again stanger gonna take that outside and that's gonna leave that inside line open to not only mancini but also the 53 of duda who who has shown since he's been back in traffic he's not afraid to make those moves either yeah the seven and the 53 may uh play a little game of limbo and see how low can you go uh in the turn one trevor they're gonna go as low as they can get you may see one of them try to pull a dale earnhardt do a little pass in the grass we'll, we'll we'll wait and see will we see somebody i mean we've seen him get down to the yellow line uh we haven't seen anybody in the grass yet but i wouldn't hold it past him here as we get ready for what could be the final restart of the night three laps to go and mancini timed that restart well he actually beats the 18 of stinger to the line here he goes through one and two he might have him cleared gonna drift up has the 18 clear the 53 of duda now trying to get by on the inside just as they head through three and four yeah, this is a great run here by the 53. Is he going to be able to actually make something happen? The 90, 
92 of Manji also sticking his nose in there. Uh, and we see them go three wide. The 18 makes a huge move. And he's going to get up there. The 7 makes contact with the wall, Trevor. 53 and the 7 are going to drag race into turns 3 and 4 here. This is the battle for the win right here. Dude, it's trying to slide. Here comes the 22 of Tarasco with the video game move into 3 and 4. It doesn't stick. Mancini with the crossover move. But dude is going to hold on to win the race. And uh -huh. what did I just witness? Through three and four, <laughs> I've almost didn't call the race to the line as Taraska comes from eight miles back into the outside wall, looking like shades of Carl Edwards out there, and gets it to somewhat stick for a fourth place finish. But holy cow, what a race that was to the end. Man, slinging it around. These boys did it tonight. Um, you know, again, if you're going to see yellow flags, you don't mind seeing it when the race is going to be that exciting, Trevor. Uh, is that was a, a great run there by Jared Duda to work his way back through traffic a couple times. Uh, gets his way back up here. 52 oh. laps led and a win. Uh, I'm sure he is feeling great. I'm sure he's feeling great. Doing a little bit of burnouts. We're going to have our producer, uh, Rob, pull him down in here. We're going to get a talk with our race winner uh, right after the race and get his thoughts on this. As uh, Jared, you got the win. You had to hold on, man. That was a heck of a finish and an entertaining race. How are you feeling after that one? That one was a wild one. I'll be honest. It first half of the race is going well, just as we planned. Second half of the race, not so much. Yeah. At what point there, Jared, did you realize, Hey, I'm gonna have to get as aggressive as these guys with these sliders and start making my move up here. And, uh, regardless of what happens, we're gonna throw caution to the wind. Yeah, about a little bit into the last stage. Um, I felt like we were running good side-by-side -side racing and about halfway through the race, half a little bit into stage three, guys were just driving it down to the apron, throwing sliders, um, which just causing a bunch of issues, uh, stack up, slide in front of people, obviously what, what you expect. Um, but after that, I decided it's time to get moving and start running people how they're running you. I mean, it worked out. You did a great job getting crossed over on Mancini there and holding them off to the to the checkered flag uh, to get the win here tonight. A little bit of a hiatus from you from last week. Didn't get the win at Richmond, but you bounce right back here uh, at Irwindale, get the win, uh, and on to the next, the third round of the playoffs where we kick it off at the Bull Ring. How you how you feeling about heading to the Bull Ring next week? Uh, I mean, I'm again, I'm not a track I run very often like Irwindale. I thought it was a lot bigger track than this. Um, don't run these very often so we show up try to give it our best and i mean i'm excited i like short track racing uh like here you got the tempers got flaring a little bit between me and some other drivers and just everyone as a whole it got a little heated um as you can expect with the amount of door banging that you saw so again i'm ready for another entertaining race for you guys i, I tell you what i think we're we are all ready to, to get to the next race i mean even even with the amount of cautions, y'all y'all put on a great show as always, and that was a very entertaining race from start to finish. But uh, before we let you get out of here, Jared, Jared, it's uh, your your floor for any shout-outs you want to give us. Yeah, again, like always, Tyler, uh, we didn't have an admin tonight, so Tyler kind of had to step out and admin a little bit uh, at the end of the race. Uh, so just thanks to him. I know, again, it's not easy putting this on, dealing with drivers racing, yelling at them, yelling at each other. Um, like I said, it's hard to deal with heated drivers. So just appreciate him putting it on uh, and sticking through it and keeping a level head while doing it as well. Um, and then thanks to you guys for good broadcast and Highland Homes for sponsoring the series and allowing us to have the broadcast as well. Um, yeah. Well, Jared, again, congratulations on the win tonight. We will see you next week at the Bull Ring. Thank you. And that was your race winner, the 53 of Jared Duda. And instead of taking a quick break, we're going to actually bring up our second place finisher, Paul Mancini in the seven machine. As Paul, it's uh, Trevor and Justice up in the booth, man. You you gave it everything you got. You were pulling the slide jobs all the way down to the bottom. You almost got it to work there. How are you feeling after that one? Yeah, I mean, that was a, that was a fun race. I, I raced asphalt on here once a week, and it's with Ty and them. But this was the closest thing to to a dirt track and i think this is probably the best track he's had so far well that explains a lot of the comfort back behind the uh the slide jobs there paul as you seem to be the most aggressive guy i'll race with that uh were you you feeling like you had a pretty good chance there on that final restart when the 18 uh continued to take the top and then you got the really good jump yeah i mean 
he refired in the same spot every single time. And the last restart, um, I figured he would go a little earlier, and he did. And uh, yeah, I thought I would have a chance, but I know Jared is fast. He wins a lot in, in this league, and uh, you know, top three for me is pretty good. I mean, you put on a heck of a show trying to hold him off there in a great battle to the line. Uh, we go to the bull ring next week. I mean, what are your what are your thoughts on that in the the last couple of races of the season? Yeah, uh, just hopefully a, another good race, and uh, I wish I was able to race every race and see how I could do in the points. But uh, I only like I, I race whenever I can with Ty, and uh, yeah, hopefully the last couple of races are good. Well, Paul, we can't. Uh, we we hope they go well for you too. You put on a heck of a show here tonight. Congratulations on the second place finish, and uh, good luck next time we see you out there on track. Yeah, thank you, guys. And that was the second place finisher, the seven of Paul Mancini in Justice. I mean, he gave it everything he got. We don't, unfortunately, have the the 18 of James Stanger to talk to, our third place finisher. Uh, but, I mean, I don't think you could ask for anything more that, uh, of a, anything more that this race could have really put on for us here tonight. No, I don't. I don't know what else you could really expect from it. I, I know they're uh, they're going to apologize about the yellow flags, but again, we we kind of said it all night. If you're going to do that, at least make it fun. These guys made it fun all night. It was great watching up here in the booth. Um, again, you you love the mix of the aggressive and non-aggressive styles. Uh, so you see guys kind of just hug up there and feel like they can check up and avoid all those guys throwing slide jobs. But great race to the end. Uh, we can't ask for a better battle than for it to come through uh, turn three and four, still not knowing who's going to win. So uh, great job by these guys, put on a great show for us. And I kind of expect more of the same uh, the next couple weeks. Yeah, I think we're going to be in for the, the same action next week at the Bull Ring, And it's, it's, it feels like it's been that way all season. I think all the races have, have pretty much come down to, to the wire. And it's been fun to cover here for the TTR Short Track Series brought to you by Highland Homes Roofing. So go check out Highland Homes Roofing on YouTube. Like, comment, and subscribe, as again, they've been the primary sponsor for the TCR Short Track guys as they wind up their season with only three races left to go before we crown, or two races left to go. No, sorry, it is three races left to go before we crown a champion. I'll eventually get my math right. But for us here tonight on the Revo Racing Network, myself, Trevor Earhart, Justice Murphy, Rob Rader running the production, that's going to be it. If you want more racing action from us, tune in next Monday or this coming Monday night for the uh, Racing Revolution Truck Coastal Financial Truck Series as they go to Charlotte for their third race after two first-time winners, not only in Racing Revolution uh, League history, but in the Truck Series as well. And then uh, if you want more Racing Revolution action, Wednesday night on the V-Speed Network, they'll be at Talladega for the Super Speedway. And we'll be right back here Thursday night for more TTR short track coverage from the Bull Ring. But for us here tonight in the booth, that's going to be it. And we will see you Monday night. Highland Homes has served our community's roofing needs since 1986. Our local team is proud to stand behind each roof we install and relationships we are building with our community. Highland Homes, where quality is our legacy.